Greetings again everyone, and today I'm getting back into the land of expensive Zeiss lenses. We have here the Milvus 35mm f1.4. It's a manual focus lens for full frame digital SLR cameras, although it can also be mounted onto mirrorless cameras. This lens costs a huge £1,300 in the UK, or around US dollars so it had better be something seriously special. I love 35mm lenses on a full frame camera because they're incredibly practical with a useful wide angle field of view, yet 35mm gets you just close enough to your subject for you to subtly be drawn into them and even to get a bit of background separation on the action too, especially when shooting at f1.4. And an aperture as bright as that also allows you to shoot in very dark conditions a lot more easily. This lens's build quality is pretty spectacular, to put it mildly, it's awesome to behold, and a very simple lens too. It's metallic, very solid, and pretty heavy, weighing over a kilogram or nearly three pounds. It's pretty big too, so it only really feels at home on a larger camera. The metal lens mount at the rear is edged with a generous weather sealing gasket in Zeiss's distinctive hypnotizing blue color. The lens's only external control point is its focus ring, which extends across almost the entire body, but is finished in rubber towards the bottom. It turns wonderfully smoothly, and with a very long throw, about 230 degrees by my estimate, which allows for very precise focusing. The lens exhibits a moderate amount of focus breathing, zooming in noticeably as you focus more closely to your subject. As I mentioned already, this is a manual focus lens, and it doesn't have image stabilization, but you can control its aperture through your camera and get EXIF information in your files. The lens also comes with a metallic hood, which is deep and very nicely flocked on the inside to prevent reflections. Overall, top marks for build quality here, Zeiss really do know how to make a gorgeous manual focus lens, although its size and weight are certainly not for the faint-hearted. Honestly, in some ways I prefer the build quality of these Zeiss Milvus lenses to their far more expensive Otis lenses. The Milvus lenses are a little smaller and have extra weather sealing. Now let's move on to picture quality. I'm testing the lens on quite a demanding camera here. It's adapted onto my 45 megapixel full frame Canon EOS R5. In the middle of the image at f1.4, we see a slightly soft image with rather low contrast. Yes, the lens was focused correctly here. Over in the corners, unfortunately, we see a very soft image. Again, honestly, this lens was focused correctly. Disappointing. Stop down to f2 and things are a little clearer in the corners, if still a little jumbled. The middle of the image looks excellent now, though. At f2.8, the middle of the image is absolutely perfect and the corners dramatically improved, now looking very good. F4 and F5.6 see further little improvements, leaving you with excellent image quality, although the lens shies away from being truly razor sharp here. If you stop down as far as F16, then a fair bit of softness will emerge from the effects of diffraction. I have to tell you now that I don't think I had a faulty copy of the lens here, its optics were well centred, and these results are actually largely in line with other reviews I've seen on the internet and with Zeiss's own published MTF charts. For a $2000 lens, the image sharpness here at bright apertures really is very disappointing. Now, I could have tested this lens on an APS-C camera too, my Canon EOS M6 Mark II, but that's with a friend at the moment, and I doubt the results would have been good though. So let's move on and look at the lens's distortion and vignetting on full frame. We see moderate barrel distortion being projected here, just enough to be noticeable in your pictures, but nothing dramatic. We are also treated some very heavy vignetting at f1.4. The good news here is that if you stop down to f2 or f2.8, then those corners do brighten up quite quickly. Still, just an average performance here. Now, let's see about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to a very impressive 29 centimeters, giving you lovely, intimate images of smaller subjects. Very nice. Less encouraging though, is that image sharpness deteriorates as you move closer, looking very soft at f1.4. F2 looks far better though, and at f2.8, sharpness is excellent again, close up. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. 
So far, its performances have been a little mediocre, but here we see a better than average showing. The lens shows little flaring and holds on to its contrast quite well. And now, bokeh. An important question for a very expensive f1.4 lens is how nicely its backgrounds are rendered. Generally, the Zeiss lens does a very nice job. Its outer focus areas look pretty lovely and soft overall, but not perfect. As you can see here, at f1.4 there's a strong cat's eye shape to bokeh balls, even quite close to the centre of the image. And within those brighter points, we do see an onion patterned substructure. And finally, related to bokeh, is longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's tricky to see here because of the soft close-up image quality, but we do see a little colour fringing before and after the plane of focus. Stop down to f2 or f2.8 and it quickly goes away, so that's a slightly better performance than average in all fairness. So then, $2000, what do you think? To a reasonable person, is this lens really worth it? Because of its enormous price tag, I think I need to put my boxing gloves on here, because to use a colloquialism, this lens is all frills and no knickers. It's gorgeous on the outside with absolutely superb build quality, but the lens doesn't have the technical image quality where it counts, especially at brighter apertures, performing way behind the average expectations of even a much less expensive 35mm lens. Sigma and Tamron make 35mm f1.4 lenses that perform much better than this nowadays, that's how much the photography industry has changed in recent times. On the face of it, the lens's pictures look nice, its bokeh is pleasant enough, and when stopped down, it is capable of good sharpness. But even very inexpensive 35mm lenses can achieve that. As soon as you zoom into your images for a closer look, a number of problems begin to emerge which will leave you feeling short-changed. In all honesty, I have been warming to Zeiss lenses in recent years, but this is certainly one to avoid.